Yeah, 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 yeah. Advertising is everywhere. Marketers are being challenged to find new and innovative ways to make their messages stand out. But do they really know what's cutting through? And how far will they go to find out? Advertisers are now teaming up with neuroscientists for answers. They're using brain imaging technology to literally look inside our heads. In the hope of selling a brand or message, advertisers are turning to a new field called neuromarketing. Neuromarketing is actually giving us the first look at, at an objective measure of, of consumer responses that isn't filtered from their more rational side of their brains. Dr Moon is using electroencephalograms, or EEGs, to measure the brain's electrical activity while a subject watches a TV ad. Everybody's searching for someone. What we're doing is recording from multiple sites on the brain. We typically use 40 to 64 sites, and that captures a, a lot of the information across the brain. They also record eye-tracking information, so they can see exactly which part of the screen the subject is watching at any given time. We're then able to uh, go back and look at the eye-tracking overlaid with the specific ads, tied in with the specific brain activity recording to then feed back to our client. What we're seeing here, Marianne, is the recording from each of the electrode sites. And then what we're seeing here is a, a brain model of the recordings uh, so that we can actually then start to understand which areas of the brain are being activated. Yellow is the stronger activation, um, the darker the colour is the less activation. So that's what we want to see. So you can actually see in real time different parts of the brain firing up? That's right. So as the, the movie plays along, you actually will be able to see the, the brain changing as the EEG changes. This process can reveal the parts of an ad that elicit the strongest emotional response. And that's mainly what advertisers want to know. If it's a concept ad, what parts of the concept are working, which parts aren't. And if it's a finished ad, we can go back and say, you've wasted your money if it wasn't working, or good job, your creative department has, has done a bang on job. <laughs> Advertising veteran Don Jeffrey believes we need to know what motivates someone to buy a product. If we can capture and understand the emotions of the people that are buying our product, then our advertising is going to be far more effective. And if we want to hold our market share, we've got to put messages out there and convince people that they're doing the right thing buying our client's product. A new course dedicated to neuromarketing is now being taught at the University of Melbourne. By drawing on neuroscience-based tools, we hope to get a better understanding of different brain regions that contribute to decisions, and that will improve our theories of how decisions are made. This comes over the top. Dr Philip Harris is particularly interested in knowing why people make impulsive decisions. We conducted some functional magnetic resonance imaging research and by doing that we were able to see which areas of the brain were actually involved in that decision making process. This research has broader implications for other choices we make in everyday life. Addiction related issues are very much drawn on these same processes. So my choice of whether I will have that cigarette now or ab abstain and, and have a longer life or whether I'll have that hamburger or a healthy meal. It's that same basic process of choosing the immediate reward versus something that's better for me later on. But does neuromarketing raise ethical issues? In research, we have ethics committees to monitor these things. But in the commercial world, these rules don't apply. It might be used to give marketers information that we don't choose to give them. But then this could be seen as an invasion of privacy. A uh, far more serious ethical issue to my mind is the manipulation of people's decisions. If they're tempted by something, then you might be able to be manipulated into giving in and then regretting it subsequently. Shane and his team would be the only people that actually see 
the individual brainwaves, we, we wouldn't see that. So I don't see that as a problem at all. I think it's important that people understand it is another tool. It, it's not going to replace focus groups, it's not going to replace online uh, research. It's just another one in the toolbox that people need to be aware of and depending on what they want to try to achieve, they can now use neuromarket research.